Welcome to The Weekly Word, a 52-week journey through the Bible. My name is Matt Lidikanen, and with me is Steve Lampy, and we are both Christian pastors currently serving at Messiah Church in Midland, Michigan, and we're excited to be journeying with you through the Bible. Every week, we'll be taking a big picture view of the scripture you'll be reading, point out some points of interest along the way, and together gain a better vision of the God who loves us. This podcast follows along with the daily readings found in the one-year chronological Bible reading plan and resources from Tyndale House Publishers. So we are back in Exodus, and we are continuing our journey with Moses. Last week, we uh, touched on it just for like five seconds. <laughs> not a very lot yeah, of time. Not brief. a lot of time we spent, but... <clears throat> Um, you know, he's been appointed by God to be the deliverer for the Israelites, and they are looking to him mm-hmm. and gradually realizing, hey, this is something's going to happen here. And mm-hmm. the plagues that God has been sending through Moses at his word as command are very persuasive mm-hmm. to everybody mm-hmm. except for Pharaoh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's probably the biggest thing you have to recognize throughout this entire episode. It's like, I was thinking about like, I know there's some people who have talked about Pharaoh and, you know, oh, God hardened his heart. You know, this what's what's that all about? And that's an interesting conversation, but um, it made me think of a um, a video series I watch on YouTube sometimes called Pitch Meeting. Mm-hmm. And it's like, so why should we hate this bad guy? Why don't we like him? And yeah. it's like, you know, there's never really a clear reason in the rest, in the rest of the film, but in the beginning he, like, you know, tortures a small puppy. You know, it's like... <laughs> That's um, reason enough, man. And then we're just like, when's he going to die? You know, yes, <laughs> that's the immediate yeah. question. Yeah. So, I mean, that's sort of the idea with Pharaoh, like, yeah. you know, throwing a bunch of babies into the mm-hmm. into the Nile River. Um, that's pretty, yeah. 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 We kind of want to know when's this guy going to get his. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. um, and he's enslaved a bunch of people and beats them and mercilessly mm-hmm. forces them into labor. You know, his, we're kind of like, when's he going to go? Yeah, his, <laughs> We'd like to know. His, his track record, his track record is, is pretty destructive and, and, and set against... A particular people as well. So yeah. you could see that you could see that he had he I think you even said like last week, like he was he was not a great there was nothing that was really merciful about this this guy. No. Uh he was very self interested. Yeah, absolutely. Just mm-hmm. whether, didn't even have like the the affairs of the country in mind because as no. we as think as it goes on, even his advisors are like, mm-hmm. Egypt is ruined. We're done. But the pride Let them go. imagine the pride that to have your livestock, your crops, your your water tainted, um, the disease yeah. and, and the, the the amount of frogs and flies and gnats and death that's already happened. And to still say, I'm not letting go. I mean, nope. just the amount of pride mm-hmm. <laughs> where God's made it almost mm-hmm. blatantly clear, this is my people, let them go. And for you to six times say no, nope, mm-hmm. nope, nope. And then finally, we know the last... The last plague is, of course, the worst. So Yes, and that's the thing that finally, you know, how much straw can this camel's back hold? Mm -hmm. And we find out Mm -hmm. this is the last one. Yeah. So uh, Exodus chapter 10, we have the plague of locusts, and then followed by a plague of darkness, which is a a darkness that can be felt, is what it says in the text, which is... I can't even imagine that. I don't know what that means, but I've been in cave darkness before. Have you been in cave darkness before? I have been. Like total total darkness? Yeah. It's it's wild. The (laughs) Tuckalichi Caverns, man. (laughs) Down down in Gatlinburg, (laughs) Gatlinburg, Tennessee, Tuckalichi. They shut the lights out on us when we were in there. And, and they couldn't find it's the lights. It's terrifying. Switch, yeah. It's terrifying. There was like there was like drop offs into ravines, and there were little kids around. I'm like, turn the lights on. These kids are going to fall in the ravine. Oh my god! But I mean, it's, but it's pitch black. You 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 really haven't seen anything like that type of darkness unless you go into a cave. lights go back on. Where's Nancy? Yeah. Huh? Well, she's. Oh no. She, yeah. She's swimming. Jeez. She's swimming somewhere. So oh. yeah, total darkness. But only that's just the wild thing about that particular plague. Yeah. Only on the land of Egypt in Goshen, it's light normally. Yeah. That's why you're that's you like, 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 because usually that's even like, like you can see, stuff. like, with like the light of the moon, even like the light of stars helps a little bit. But mm-hmm. you can't even imagine, like, like how that all panned out for that area, just the sheer darkness and what that meant in its yeah. fullness. I, I think we think darkness, we think, okay, so this was deep darkness. Could they even yeah. see stars? Or was that, was that even taken from them? We don't even know. Yeah. I think so, I, mean, I just, that thought occurred to me because Pharaoh and mm-hmm. the next one to come is, you know, the death of Pharaoh's son and the firstborn mm-hmm. of Egypt, uh, including the livestock's firstborn. So, mm-hmm. and the Pharaoh in Egyptian mythology would be the son of the god Ra. Mm-hmm. He's the son of the god. Um, so it's kind of divine, if yeah. you will. And he was, and Ra was the god of the sun. Mm-hmm. So then you have total darkness. 
it's a judgment mm. against the sun god sure. and you've, you've you've extinguished the sun god Almost overcome the sun um, so yeah, with darkness. you know we're clearly demonstrating uh, <clears throat> yahweh's yahweh's top dog there's no other god yeah there's no other lord there is only yeah yahweh there's only god yep um so huh. progressively over the course that. of all of these plagues every single one of them have a correlation to some egyptian yeah. uh god or goddess mm -hmm. and each of them just being mm -hmm. taken out one yeah. after the other, and demonstrating very clearly to all the Isra e Egyptians, this is, yeah, the, the Israelite God is nothing to be messed with. And then it culminates in the plague on the firstborn. And this is really mm -hmm. key because this is where the Passover is introduced. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> looking at that passage, so um, the entire Israelite community is told this. This is chapter 12. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the fourteenth day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and the tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over a fire with the head, legs, and internal organs. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some of it le is left until morning, you must burn it. This is how you're to eat it. With your cloak mm -hmm. tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, eat it in haste. It is the Lord's. Passover. And then he says, on the same night, I'll pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, bringing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, like we were talking mm -hmm. about. Um, and the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you mm -hmm. when I strike Egypt. So mm. we have the institution of Passover, which is a huge yeah. meal, huge, huge celebration. Yeah. And it goes all the way to Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The Lord's Supper and... Um, but partaking in the, the the body and blood of Christ, it's the sacrifice that it was our sacrifice that saved us from death, that has rescued us mm -hmm. from death. Just as the it's that foreshadow, right? The mm -hmm. foreshadow of these <clears throat> this event that happened in Exodus of putting the blood on the door the, the doorways, and then the Holy Spirit um, coming with wrath on the Egyptians and and mercy and grace and forgiveness. Uh, on the Israelites, right? So they were mm -hmm. saved from the plague of death, which yeah. essentially, if you think about it too, like what's the curse that was left on mankind in sin? That you will surely die now. Mm -hmm. And so in Christ, that sacrifice and the, the, the Lord's Supper and the forgiveness we receive in there, what is that? What, what, do, we, what do we receive within that? Life. And yeah. we are saved from death. And so the foreshadow of that event specifically that we receive now in Jesus Christ is just so cool. To mm -hmm. think about, oh yeah, I mean, it's, it's so deep, and it's and this is just the this is like the one of the first times that we see it, but it's you can see it develop even more as we go mm -hmm. into Leviticus and and the sacrificial system that's set up and how the priests, which is it's pretty interesting at times, but how the priests yeah. partake and eat yeah. of the sacrifices offered, and um, but just an incredible thing that sometimes we overlook that that the the foreshadowing of what was to come in Christ. That is so evident in the Old Testament. It's so awesome. Totally. Uh, just to see how God works in that. Yeah, everything about the Passover feast from the lamb that is mm -hmm. to be sacrificed. Okay. Yep. And there's even, even in like liturgies of the church, it's Christ, our Passover lamb, was slain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Passover <laughs> lamb. Why? Because it's a, it's a lamb without spot or blemish. Yeah. Jesus is without sin. Yeah. His blood is shed for us, and God's wrath passes over us. I mean, yeah. there's so many. Yeah, the timing, so many the timing of the Lord's yeah. Supper. I mean, we're we're literally Passover yes. at that moment in uh, His death, and it's just it's so just strategic by God's part, mm -hmm. right? So. And this was like, I mean, this is an intentional Passover, uh, mm -hmm. intentional feast, and God later commands in, as mm -hmm. we'll see, like you know, do this year after year. Don't don't stop. This is a, yep. a thing that you should always do. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Jesus. On the night when he was betrayed, he flips the script. They're doing the Passover meal. I don't know if a lot of people always realize that, mm -hmm. um, but in the words of institution, he's actually you know adding to and changing some of the scripts. Mm -hmm. And you can really see this if you've ever participated in a Seder meal or a Passover meal, like a like a Christian Passover meal. 
um, you learn a lot about the different aspects, mm-hmm. even the 11 bread. Mm. Um, the, the bread is like a being without yeast is like the yeast is some, is a lot of the times even Jesus talks about, don't, don't let, don't be taking in like the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the disciples are confused about this, but mm-hmm. it's like, it, you're talking about the, the teaching, the ideas, the, mm-hmm. the sinfulness of that. And that's the, you know, you're take yourselves, take the sin <clears throat> and the curse of the world out of yourselves. And mm-hmm. you're going to have in the bread that is unleavened without yeast is supposed to symbolize that kind of purity. Yeah. So there's so much. So there's this yeah. baked, baked in, ha, bread mm-hmm. pun. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you just laid down the bread pun. Yeah. Name More a, to come. Name a uh, podcast that can do that. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Name a podcast that can do that. Absolutely. <laughs> We're the best out there. Um, so there is the Passover. Good to talk about it for a minute because it's so significant and it just carries on to the New Testament, even to what we do today with the Lord's Supper in our churches. Um, but uh, we get to the the firstborn are, are slain and the people of Israel by faith are saved mm-hmm. because they've put the blood on the doorposts and lintels of their yep. homes. And then we have uh, the actual exodus. They leave Egypt mm-hmm. finally and they're going out and they've plundered the Egyptians mm-hmm. just as God promised that they would. They wouldn't even raise a sword. Then mm-hmm. they just walk away and all the Egyptians are like, please take my money, <laughs> like go away. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which I'd probably be there too if I was at that as, a, as an Egyptian. Mm. And so this great multitude goes out of Egypt and they get to the Red Sea and God kind of leads them right to the dead end basically. Yeah. Um, but he has a plan. Mm-hmm. There's a master plan at work and we have... Uh, Pharaoh's heart hardened one more time in Exodus chapter 14. Just, just can't get enough of that hard heart. It's got to go yeah. one more step. Try this again. Yeah, let's do it one more time. Let's yeah. see if it works. Yeah, probably won't. Didn't work. Um, you know, insanity. What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over, over again. And expecting <laughs> a different result. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so yeah. he takes his whole army out there, chariots, charioteers, everything. And the people of Israel freak out, understandably, because mm-hmm. they've had an entire army on their heels. Yeah. And so they cry out to the Lord. And this is just a, a wonderful passage. So much grace. Um, Moses answers the people in Exodus 14, verse 13. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The mm-hmm. Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And so he spreads his arms and boom, yeah. Red Sea opens up. They walk on through yep. and they turn, uh, turn around and guess who's chasing him? The Egyptians yep. through the sea, but whoopsie. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they're about to be swallowed up by the by mm-hmm. the waters of it. That's one of those things too. I mean, you see you, you see it in movies where I mean, you, I think we've seen it in like you know like the cartoon thing of the Prince of Egypt or mm-hmm. other movies that great you, film. We recommended it. We recommend it again. Yeah, that <laughs> Matt's Matt's down for the. I'm really down for it. throwing that Absolutely. one out there for you guys. Um, but other movies great too soundtrack. Have, Sorry. Have, <laughs> <laughs> How much do you like the Prince of Egypt? <laughs> so much. <laughs> Maybe a lot. It's all good. Yeah. But you see it in there. You see it in there. You can see it depicted in other movies too. But I could never imagine like in person going through that moment um, because you, cause there's fear, right? And what and the fear of what? The fear is of death. You know these people aren't coming to take you back someplace. They're, go- they're coming to kill you. That was the – that's mm-hmm. – this, re- this is like revenge time. Uh, mm-hmm. The plagues have come. Your God has uh, killed our force firstborn – We've released you, the, the hardness of heart for Pharaoh. These people are coming to kill you. They're not coming to, like, chastise you and say, we don't want to see you ever again. They're, they're probably going to come and kill you. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fear is of what? Death. But the certainty of God within that moment is don't be afraid because I'm going to make a way. Mm-hmm. So there's so many. As you go through the Red Sea, that is symbolism mm-hmm. of water in which you are saved through baptism. Baptism. And so for the believer... There is no fear of death and sin because right. there is deliverance and there's a certainty that we find in Jesus Christ and our baptism and the forgiveness we receive in those things and the promises, his word, right? So mm-hmm. it's all over the place and it's like Exodus is full of it, all the foreshadowing. And mm-hmm. it's just a beautiful thing to, to, to really hold on to that this is our God. He's a rescuing God and mm-hmm. he's a certain God. So it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And so many pictures of our faith today in, in Christ that's like, you know, we... We were slaves to sin. Mm-hmm. Who was who else was slaves to sin? Where does yeah. the language come from? I mean, yeah. This is all it all goes back to this story. Yep. Um, don't be slaves to sin. Submit yourselves instead. Uh, your 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 instruments as righteousness uh, mm-hmm. as instruments as slaves to righteousness. Right. Your mm-hmm. your arms, your legs, your hands, your mouth, 
everything, submit yourselves to God for righteousness sake and be a mm-hmm. slave to, to God mm-hmm. and let him be your master, not let Satan who yeah. would want to see your soul and body destroyed. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, that whole theme is carried on and we we'll see this too. It's like, just because we've entered through the waters of baptism and we have faith in Jesus Christ, yeah, who has himself redeemed us yeah. without us lifting a hand or a yeah. finger. Um, in the same way, we kind of carry on in a pattern of sinful behavior, yeah. which we have the power to turn from, mm-hmm. um, but oftentimes we seem to forget yeah. that we have been from set the, free from sin yeah. and made alive to God. And I know we're going to talk about this here in a second, but as we, as they go through the Red Sea, there's this great there's this great revelation of God's faithfulness and His power, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a celebration, right? There's this this amazing moment. Amazing, and what we would call maybe this amazing high of deliverance, right? This amazing high mountaintop experience of of God's faithfulness that we're a part of. But then, even after a lot of those things that we experience, that are these so like amazing moments with God that we can like point to in our life, man, this is such a great experience to have this this point or this point, mm-hmm. a real mountaintop experience. Sometimes it was baptism for some people, mm-hmm. but then you know that that's not always that's not like the end all of of a walk in relationship with Christ. Because guess what happens? The valleys happen. Mm-hmm. The troubles happen, life happens, and then you have to walk through the desert. And immediately yeah. after the Red Sea, here we go. We have mm-hmm. we have what what we go through even today, going in coming out of the baptismal waters and into the walk with Christ in our in our life is the temptations and the 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 the, the shortcomings of following God and the disobedience mm-hmm. that the struggle that the Israelites had is very much. Um, we can relate very much to what they go through right after oh, yeah. they come out of the waters. And you're right; it's part of it's part of the, of the believer's walk. But you said it right. We do have the power to recognize it. We're we're aware of our sin, and we can turn from our sin. Um, but mm-hmm. there will always be this battle with flesh, and mm-hmm. I think that's the that's what the Israelites are going to experience here as we talk further, even through coming through the Red Sea. That amazing high, that amazing moment that they had with God. Yeah, yeah, and it says at the very end of that. It's like they put their faith in him. Yeah. yeah. At that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They've seen a lot out of this point. Like, and all right. So now I, t- I do believe. <laughs> yeah. I do believe, Lord. Uh, about time. Um, of course, that faith is is tested. And right away, we're yeah. in the wilderness. Um, they've, sang, they've sung an incredible song in Exodus 15. It's just kind of poetry sprinkled in the midst of this great narrative. Yeah. Um, and then... We have Exodus 16, 17, and 18. Just there's a number of stories. Um, we have God providing manna and quail. Um, mm-hmm. There's a very clear daily bread connection in mm-hmm. that. Like um, God supplies just as much as I need every day. Yeah. And this doesn't stop until they enter into the land of Canaan and they taste of its fruit mm. for the very first time. Mm-hmm. So at that, that point, it says it very right there in Joshua, as we'll read later. Um, and on that day, manna stopped falling yeah. from heaven. Um, hmm. Then we have water from the rock. And all the while, I mean, the people are whining. They're like, we're hungry. We're thirsty. We need, I mean, these are legitimate needs. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> but they're all like, you know, you just brought us out here to die, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, that's their entire, like, there's, I, mean, I don't know how many people kind of stood in the gap and, like, they yeah. were the spokespeople, but. In general, um, it wasn't, it wasn't. Hey, we're just right. clinging to the Lord. He's gonna be faithful. It was more the yeah, what are we doing right. out here? Why are we eating all this bird and and and, and 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 this bread, this manna from heaven, whatever this is, and what's going on? Like you know, it's just that question of, you know, it's always what what always affects our heart so much with our walk with God is what our eyes see, right? Uh, what yeah. our eyes see, and what's the reality of th- what this day has brought or this season has brought, and that's mm-hmm. what tests is. What our eyes see. Where's the faith? Do we do we really truly believe that God is faithful? That He's good? That He is going to deliver on His promises? And that's the struggle that they have. That's the struggle that we have too. What what makes us doubt our faith? And what makes us sometimes maybe question or complain in our life is we don't have what we want, but mm-hmm. we have what right. we need, right? And that's yeah. the thing that the Israelites yeah. they may not have had it everything they want. They may not have had everything they wanted but they had what they needed and got mm-hmm. exactly what they needed. So, and then when you don't have everything you want, oftentimes like, oh man, you know, and then you start complaining and then you got to do a heart check, which they mm-hmm. didn't really do. And yeah. then there was some problems. So, yeah. And just to connecting this to, you know, our life in Christ again, just re- hitting that home again, Romans six, 
one of my favorite chapters of Romans. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live it any longer? Mm -hmm. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So um, I think there is a, there's a misconception that if, you know, we, yes, we have that battle with the flesh, mm -hmm. but the reality is we're on top. Mm -hmm. We have the Holy Spirit. We have been yep. made new in Christ. We have mm -hmm. the old, the old Adam, the, the flesh in ourselves yeah. has been crucified, has yep. been put to death. Therefore, we have been freed from the power of the devil, from mm -hmm. the power of sin, and we don't, it doesn't have any hold on us. It's very mm -hmm. clear about that. Yep. And so sometimes we can just be like, oh man, I was actually hearing about uh, uh, another member at Messiah talk about this, and I thought, that's a good point. You know, let's say someone's struggling with pornography, mm -hmm. which is a sin. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, well, have you tried quitting? I'm like, yeah, I really try it, but I'm struggling. <laughs> but let's just say, okay, turn that around. What's adultery? Yeah. Isn't, isn't adultery sleeping with your neighbor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, have you tried stopping? Well, I've tried. It's kind of hard though. You know, she invites me over. <laughs> yeah, I'm and, trying to stop yet. And <laughs> I haven't, I haven't stopped yet. I'll, yeah. I'll try again next week. You just say like, just stop. Yeah. Don't do it. Draw the line. Mm -hmm. And you would because yeah. like, that's like more serious, right? Yeah. yeah. It's no less. And I think that's yep. the, the main point here is like, we don't have to be grumbling, complaining like the Israelites. Mm -hmm. We have to turn, we have to turn yeah. with our needs to God, with our wants to God, and just yep. redirect those things. Take every thought captive to Christ. Yeah. Yep. I think yeah. what it, I think it comes down to too is like you know, remember, you like remember like maybe it's the night. Is it Romans nine or seven where Paul talks about it, the sin that he hates, um, that he struggles with? I I hate what I do. I don't do yeah. what I want to yeah. do. Seven. That yep. has to be for 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 like the turning away and repentance. That really has to be alive within our hearts. You really have to hate. You have, oh, yeah. you have to, I hate I hate that I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. I don't want this. But if there's an inclination to I don't mind it. And maybe, maybe God doesn't really care. Oh, good. there's no way. There's no possible way and self-effort is ever going to help you turn away from those things. You really have to look at your yeah. sin and say, I don't want it anymore. I'm disgusted by it. I don't want it. Right. Right. And then you walk into that with like you make those changes. Mm -hmm. It becomes a I got I want to quit. What changes do I need to make? Anytime you're going to stop something that you know you shouldn't be doing, like people like people, mm -hmm. let's just say smoking, people want to quit smoking. You can't just say, I want to stop smoking and do nothing. You have yeah. to do something. So there's there's this the same way even walking in repentance within our life yeah. too. I mean, yeah, so, we'll stumble and fall. I yeah. think that's just the main thing is we have the authority mm -hmm. over sin in the with the power of Christ. Yeah. Not on our own power. By no, no means no, 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 is no. in our own power. But it's through the spirit, mm -hmm. through what Jesus has done for us. We have we have victory mm -hmm. and we can walk in victory. Mm -hmm. Um it's not a cakewalk. Oh, no. We can walk. No, 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 <laughs> okay. because it's still a battle, right? It's, yeah, a, battle. it's a battle. That's why we have the armor of God. And yeah. Paul talks about those things too. It's a battle. You're you're battling the the the, the fallen nature of what mm -hmm. you still have with the the spirit that God's placed in you that continues to testify of Christ's goodness, his his scripture to us to help us walk through those things and remind us who we are as his children first. Right, We're, mm -hmm. our old self is dead, new life, new self is in Christ. That's who we are now, not not the old self. So mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. so then we want they wander through the wilderness a little bit. They get to Mount Sinai. This is a really critical episode because there's a lot that happens at Sinai, tons mm -hmm. that happens. Um, really a lot of it's just a lot of law, mm -hmm. a lot of how do we live as the God's covenant people? We're mm -hmm. invited into God's a covenant relationship with him, yeah. uh, just as God promised through Abraham, mm -hmm. I'm going to make a great nation out of you and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to enter into a covenant with them and they'll be my people mm -hmm. and they, and I'll be their God. So he appears on the mountain, Mount Sinai, and the famous... Ten Commandments are given mm -hmm. right there, and it's just uh, God is speaking to them, and the Israelites just can't have it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can't stand it. Yeah. It says in verse 19 <laughs> through 20, speak to us yourself and we'll listen, they say to Moses, but don't have God speak to us or we will die. Mm -hmm. Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. Mm -hmm. um, and we see that in just a couple of chapters wasn't as effective as we would hope. No, <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah, like, the present, the presence of Almighty God is like there. Fire, smoke, <laughs> trumpet sounds like it's and even terrifying. That, even then, <laughs> even then, it still yeah. didn't turn out well. Forty days later, where'd that Moses go? Yeah. You know. Well, guess we should build a 
Build a golden image. <laughs> yeah, we should make an image. <laughs> yeah, so. These are your gods, Israel. Yeah. Yep. Um, but in the between those episodes, between Exodus 34 and Exodus 20, we have a list of laws, tabernacle, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Tabernacle, the more to come next yeah. week. Um, but suffice to say, there's a few laws in there that will be expanded upon in later books of the Torah. So that's what we're in right now, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, those are all the Torah. That yeah. comprises the Torah. So mm-hmm. it's whenever I say that, just a FYI for listeners. <laughs> um, yep. There's some laws about servants and slaves, um, comments on servants and slaves. So this is Exodus 21. There's mm-hmm. just a couple of things in there that might kind of like, wait, what? Slavery? Is that a thing? Mm-hmm. Um, how do you? How would you coach our listeners through slavery you have in the, the Bible? Do you have the, read the scripture. Do you have the scriptures pull up? I know that we had them. I'll do it. Earlier do just it so right we now. can have, yeah. we can hear what they say. The, the main thing here is a lot of people mm-hmm. get thrown by this because the only the most recent example of slavery that we have in our society is yeah. chattel slavery, the North American slave trade, like yeah. that whole abducting nightmare. people from an island, throwing them on a boat, letting them die, yeah. throwing them over the boat, and then selling them for money. And it's totally yeah. different than the slavery of what we what we read in the in the, in the Bible. It right. Is. So in there, it's uh, so the verse twenty, verse two of chapter twenty one. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he's a serve you for six years, but in the seventh year he shall go free without paying anything. If he comes alone, he's to go free alone. But if he has a wife, when he comes, she is to go with him. His master bears give him a wife, and she bears him sons or daughters. The woman and her children shall belong to her master, and only the man shall go free. But if the servant declares, I love my master and my wife and my children, I don't want to go free. Hmm. Then his master must take them before the judges. He shall take him to the door of a, or the doorpost and pierce his ear with an owl. Then he will be his servant for life. And there's more mm-hmm. to it. But um, I think the thing to take from this, again, it's not a North American slave trade here. Mm-mm. This circumstance is if an, a fellow Israelite gets into such dire straits mm-hmm. that they can't afford anything, they're, they're in <clears throat> debt, they're impoverished, they can sell themselves their work mm. to a fellow Israelite and they can kind sure. of be fed. They'll have shelter. They'll be taken care it's of. Almost like this, not sub family group, but part of the, part of the family, yet they still mm-hmm. are servants um, within that, the person that is, would be considered their master. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, see, that's totally different than what, you know, some people do point that part out. Well, yeah, you know, the slave, the Bible, the Bible loves slavery, so the Bible's got to be, you know, it can't be right if that's if we're saying that the Bible's truth. Um, but the 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 argument is you have to look contextually mm-hmm. as to the the vast difference between what was done in the 1700s, the 1600s, or the 17 1700s mm-hmm. yeah. versus contextually what the Bible is speaking on in regards to slavery. That goes for New Testament scripture too, because there's it talks about slavery too as well mm-hmm. um, in the New Testament. But yeah, it's not the, you're going to a foreign land, abducting these people from their families, right. abusing them, mistreating them all along the way for the rest mm-hmm. of their life. They're pretty much just a commodity to be bought. And if they, if they die, they die. And you just buy anyone. That's mm-hmm. not what this is pointing to. Right. And even in fact, in the same chapter, verse 20 says, anyone who beats their male or female slave with a rod must be punished if the slave dies as a direct result. So Mm -hmm. very clearly God's like, I don't, this is not okay. You can't punish someone to death. That's uh, that's a life for life right there. Right. There's, there's, there's value in that slave to God is what we Mm -hmm. read there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at best we can read slavery again in the bible as okay this is kind of sort of a system sort of a welfare system if you will mm-hmm. in some circumstances that they are they're not kind of left out to to die in the streets they can mm-hmm. be taken in they can use their able bodies to work and yeah. um, take care of their families um and it's a broken broken people in yeah. a system given to them by god through moses yeah. and they're going to mess it up and oh, 100%. It, it, it's, it does get messy in the later yeah. Yeah. later chapters yeah. um but then we have the covenant, it's confirmed, and followed by a, the covenant being confirmed on this incredible scene, which you really don't have time to go into, but we have mm-hmm. uh, God appearing on the top of the mountain to Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and or Na- Moses, Nadab, and Abihu, because Aaron's not up there. Uh, he's down on mm-hmm. the floor um, making a golden calf, apparently. <laughs> um, so there's Just that. Not our best uh, moment. So 70 elders, they go up and they, they, it says they 
ate and drank yeah. with God and they saw him, the God of Israel. They mm-hmm. saw the God of Israel, which is like totally unique, mm-hmm. totally exceptional. And golly, when's the other time that we've seen a covenant confirmed with mm-hmm. a meal? Steve? I, I mean, I think we talk about it every Sunday, right? During, we might, it might yeah. be in the words of institution that we say before <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> before, before we, we, we take communion, before we come to the Lord's table. That's the presence of God, God himself, communion, um, with flesh and blood, right? So, so mm-hmm. in the in the in the in this scripture that we talk about today, they ate together, they mm-hmm. drank, and um, it was in the the presence of God. And just as the disciples received Him in the new covenant, so we receive Him in the new covenant too, eating and drinking, and it's mm-hmm. an awesome thing. So, there's the once again, Exodus has to be probably the most foreshadowing of of the new yeah. covenant. Yeah. When the old covenant, the old covenant is being established, you immediately yeah. see you see the new right there. It's like okay, so here it comes. The new testament, the testament's coming. Here's the old, here's the old covenant, but the new testament is so ingrained in it. It's just the promise is coming of the new one, mm-hmm. and the new one's mm-hmm. better. So, yeah. And unfortunately, our section of scripture essentially ends with one of the worst moments in Israel's history that. It's just, it's just followed by echoes. It's like, it's like one big loud bang yeah. and then echoed again yeah. over and over again throughout history. Yeah. But it's the golden calf incident. Mm-hmm. God has appeared to them on the mountain. They have uh, heard his voice and they have witnessed his power. Mm-hmm. And what do they do with that information 40 days later? Where'd God, where'd God go? Where's Moses? He's gone. Yeah. I don't know. Let's just make yeah. a golden calf. Yeah. And they do. Oh, man. And, <laughs> and, and Moses comes down the mountain and just as they have literally broken the yeah. commandment, they've literally, they've broken the covenant. Moses literally breaks the covenant because he, he walks yeah. down with the tablets of the covenant in his hand. And he just goes, I'm so angry. <laughs> he throws Shatter, it down on the ground. He his... smashes it. <laughs> um, it. So it's this great, like both he smashes the covenant and they smash the covenant, mm-hmm. you know, all, And all if you think once. about it, it's four days, like it's not that long. It's four, like, four D, four D. Yeah. He's up there for a minute. Yeah, but it's not. I mean, it's like, a month. Yeah, <laughs> a yeah, month, month, yeah. Month, four month days. Yeah. So we got. So we got, sorry, forty days. We got forty days. Okay. So he's a month and change. He's up there, and you got like, you've seen all these things that have happened. You've seen all these, um, the deliverance from from the from the Egyptians. You've been through the Red Sea. You've you've been, uh, it, it just his faithfulness with manna and quail, and you've seen him providing all these all these different ways. And then okay, so he's gone for. For 40 days, and then all of a sudden, okay, maybe he's left us, maybe he's gone. Where is he? We need to make a new God. And so out comes the golden calf. And uh, Aaron, too. I mean, as Aaron, too. Total pushover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just like so easily swayed by the masses, right? And and I think sometimes that can that can affect people, right? So, mm-hmm. and of course he does. He blames it on everybody. And when Moses comes back down, he's like, oh, you know, it just kind of happened this way. I don't really just know. Happened. There's just kind of happened. Like we <laughs> threw this know. in there, and out came a golden calf. And you know, the, the yeah, it's the it's interesting to th- to think just how just how quickly a heart can change. Forty days, yeah, forty days, full of faith, excited, out of the Red Sea, and then mm-hmm. forty days. All it take was forty days, and you know that that was building too. It wasn't like on the fortieth day they just quit. There was probably yeah. like, where is yeah. he? And then forty days, whisperings happened, and grumblings yeah. as they were yeah. prone to do. Yeah. yeah. So, so it ends with this total break of the covenant. Moses intercedes. And so how do we patch things up? And that's going to be what we're going to get into the following week. But mm-hmm. more to come then. So God bless your reading. Yeah. And I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Thanks so much for joining us for The Weekly Word. If you like this podcast, be sure to rate and subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay on top of new episodes. If you have any questions or have something in scripture you'd like us to weigh in on, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at weeklyword at messiahmidland.org. That's weeklyword at messiahmidland.org.